<laughs> well, Peter, you've, you've had two days solid of uh, having journalists in and out of this room and guinea pigging for you. Yeah. What, what's been the uh, the feedback, or what have you discovered? Um, I, well, it, it, it's unbelievably nerve wracking. It, 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 I can't tell you how nerve wracking it is because you're constantly thinking, "Oh my God, are they going to get the point? Am I being, am I, you know?" I found when I get tired, I get very emotional. So I almost broke down in tears at one moment when someone stuck the arrow in the side of the horse like some mad axe killer. Um, you're worried whether people are going to understand it or not, so there's a huge amount of emotion in, but at the core of this, you're just showing off. Mm -hmm. And you're just incredibly proud of what the team has done, and you know, and when you see people smile and when they laugh, and we, even though they're tired and hung over, you just connect with them a moment, it's a brilliant thing. Uh, we were in the presentation uh, yesterday, and what I found interesting was, it almost immediately, you, you, you um, when you're talking about Fable the Journey, it was almost very, a very defensive argument you were bringing. Um, it, do, you, do you feel like um, that's an unfortunate reaction that um, the press have to connect? Do you almost feel like you have to immediately defend, defend it rather than yeah. just enjoying what the game is yeah. about? You, well, you know what? I mean, as it's gone on, I've, I've, I've started to get a little, bit, um, a little bit more focused on why we're doing this, why we're doing... Um, we're using Connect in Fable. And I've tried to be on, more honest. And the argument that I used, because there was some persuasion that I had to use to, for us to use to Connect to the team and, and to Microsoft. Um, my argument is this, and I'm going to, it's the end of the day, and I just get emotional. I am just sick to death of being having my hand clamped to this controller, of having, of having to be forced to use my thumb in a certain way, and having my other hand clamped to the other side of the controller, and having games saying, no, you will do it this way. If you don't do it this way, we're going to punish you. And I start to feel like some laboratory rat running around a maze, being forced to experience games in that way. And I remember the days when we first had controllers, when we used to put one finger on one button and then rock it back to, to, to touch the other button. When we used to twitch our fingers round, we used to flick the, the controllers, those are all gone. Sure enough, controllers are, are great, they give us exactly what we want, but that is so tedious and boring now, where every game is exactly the same. And what I love about Connect, what I adore about Connect, is that feeling of discovery. It's the, it's the feeling that I can discover a new way to play. And it's time that we did this. And okay, core gamers, they're gonna complain, oh, where's my, my I want my thumb back strapped to that, to that controller. But if we can give them a delightful experience and if they can experience what it feels like to discover gameplay again, I hope it's gonna be worth all that pain it has been to develop. Well, you sort of mentioned there about not being told exactly what to do, and that, I find that interesting where the presentation here, you were very much sitting back and just going, I'm going to watch what you're going to do, which is, obviously, enough, a huge contrast to um, the likes of Steel Battalion, obviously, across uh, in the other room here. But it's, obviously, enough, a very, very complex, very complicated game. Do you... Um, feel that's, that's endemic of, of, of the games that you want to make, that you just want to sit back and just see the reaction and s let people choose and <coughs> decide how they play? Yeah, I do. I, I do. I, this is a personal thing. I love in games, and I have loved in games for years and years and years, moments where I discover things. Whether it be a secret passage or whether it be a spell I have used in, that I haven't used before or whether it be a, a, a secret I still love doing that. But the best experiences I've always had is with actual gameplay elements, when you discover a whole part of gameplay. Now imagine crafting a game around that discovery. I'm not saying I invented this, in fact the inspiration for this idea came from Minecraft. Is that that game was entirely about discovery. It didn't, it didn't give you any tutorials when it first came out. It just said, world, 
pickaxe, go. And the, I love that. And I can remember, you know, when I first had Minecraft, going into the office and saying, have you played Minecraft? No. Have you done, have you done this? Have you tried this? What if you do this? We go down there, there's lava down. That was brilliant. Those were the days I loved about gaming. That's what I loved about gaming. And sure enough, I love running around like a laboratory rat, around these mazes that people put in front of me, shooting guns and blowing things out. I love it. But I want contrast. I want something different. And that's what we're trying to do with Journey. And one of those differences is certainly the, the sort of tactile um, relationship you have with the horse. Now, mm -hmm. this feels like obviously a, a, a logical progression from the dog yes. in Fable 2. Is that, is that exactly the sort of um, arc you wanted to take? Uh, uh, well, I, I'd love to come across as some uber amazing person that said, I had this plan and this vision. We start with a mouse and we work our way up to, you know, a human being. But no, it's just we discovered that we stumbled on this relationship with the horse. When we first implemented it, um, it was all about this horse was just, you know, just went off through the world and there was no emotional connection. And what we realized is that our testers were spending way too long just grooming their horses. And that's when we, I went and saw um, a stage play called War Horse, um, which actually, everyone should go and see it. It's absolutely amazing. And then I realized, well, of course, well, that's what we're missing. This horse absolutely loves you, unconditionally loves you. And every time you snap those reins too hard on his back, it hurts him, and that is an emotional connection that we can play on in an incredible way. You're talking about the, the design for, uh, of the horse for a second. Um, obviously, Fables always come across as a very beautifully, uh, almost cartoony, sort of rich animation yeah. style. The horse, almost in contrast, is very realistic. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, that goes down from the, the animations to the, uh, mm -hmm. obviously, off the, the fur. W what sort of research did you put into capturing that? Yeah, well, the first start, the, the horse is completely entire. In fact, the f for the first time, um, the whole of Fable is motion captured. Uh, the things that we can motion capture. It's very hard to motion capture a bee. But, um, so the whole entire horse, this is an actual horse that you're seeing reacting. Um, it was done on this massive stage. We went and I rode um, horses and carriages, and I learned how to control a horse and carriage. Interestingly enough, um, what I found in the demos that we gave today, I was, the only time I was telling people to do things, I was telling them how that rein actually works in real life, is that you pull the rein, and if you pull it gently, you're telling the horse just to turn, move its head back. You have to give it a little tug. And most people were doing this too gently, and so they weren't getting the control. Well, they just have to give it a little tug. And so I had to tell them that because I was telling them how to ride the horse. But we did an awful lot of that stuff. We spoke to the um, person who did all the horse sound effects on War Horse, the Steven Spielberg film. So we did a huge amount of research. Well, I did learn, sadly, that I'm the sort of human being which horses hate. <laughs> and I, which, is, which is very, very sad. I was told by the horse trainer that I went to, you know, a whole group of us went and said, unfortunately, you know, horses don't like some are human beings, and you're one of those human beings. And this is something you only discovered when the trainer actually told you this. It wasn't yeah, exactly. an well, well, idea. He certainly, he, you know, when he sort of kind of almost pushed me over once was um, it, it was a sign of the times. Yeah. Okay. Well, in wrapping up, um, obviously, enough you're you're working on the journey, but what's 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 the future for Lionhead looking forward in the next year or so? Um, I think the, moment, the future at the moment is um, we've got Heroes. Um, uh, I, I, I don't know if we've announced a release date. Have we? No, we haven't announced a release date. <laughs> Coming sometime soon. And then we've got Journey, so that's a real focus. And then I'm sure there's going to be sort of lots of exciting projects coming out of Lionhead in the future.